Hello creators! We are making ripped bands today, so let's check the references and see how they look in real life. Ripped parts have a simple rectangular shape. In real life, it's a big rectangle that is folded in half and attached to the bottom of the bodies and sleeves. Usually, ripped parts are smaller, or at least a bit smaller, than the bodies and sleeves opening. That's why they stretch the seam, forming small waves, and taper down. It also depends on the stretching abilities and density of the rib fabric. Some of them can strongly stretch the seam, like here, while others can keep the shape, as here, for example. So, I will show you the basic principles with which you can create any type of ribbon band. Let's jump into claw. I will start with the cuffs first. Press S, rectangle tool, and left-click in a 2D window. I want them to fit snugly on the wrist. It's about 18 to 20 cm in width. The height can be different, it depends on the style. Usually it's from 6 to 9 cm. We'll be able to adjust it later. Now let's sew this cuff to the sleeve. I use segment sewing tool and sew the top edge of the cuff to the sleeve opening and side seams together. Then select the cuff and press Ctrl D to add a symmetrical pattern. All my patterns have symmetric editing with sewing. That's why when I add a symmetrical cuff, it already has the same seam lines as the main cuff, and I don't need to add them again. We need to place them in a 3D window closer to the shirt. Select both patterns and right-click on them in a 3D window. Superimpose Side. This section places the patterns according to the seam lines. It may not work properly, because we have a seam only on the top edge, and sometimes it's not enough for the software to understand how to place it. There is a small trick. Select the cuffs again. You can also right-click on the yellow square on the gizmo tool. Select Superimpose side once again, and the pattern will change the location. Sometimes it works, sometimes not, so you can use arrangement points to place the cuffs alternatively. Now let's add a waistband. The principle is the same as with cuffs, but in this case the width is the sum of all bottom edges on the front and back patterns. Select them and check the length in the property editor. 2D line length is 57 cm, but it's a half circumference, yellow lines only. The full length is 115 cm. It includes symmetrical lines or blue lines. That's what we need. I'm going to make the waistband a bit smaller, so it stretches on the seam. Let's make it about 100 cm. We will change it later if needed. Add a new rectangle and type the width and height. Sew it to the bodies with the segment sewing tool. Press and hold Shift and sew the band to all the edges on the bodies. Sew the side edge and place it in a 3D window. Simulate and check how it looks. I want to put the hands down, so we don't move the camera to see what is going on with the cuffs. Open the library, avatar, female version 2, the one I use now, pose, this one. Double click on it and press OK. So we added patterns, now we need to make them look realistic. First of all, let's change the particle distance for them to 10, to make them more detailed and simulate small folds and stretching on the top seam. Then let's pick other fabrics to simulate bodies and bands correctly. You can use blank fabric and change physical properties only, or load a fabric from the library. I will use it the second way, because I want to have some basic textures applied to see the difference between fabrics. I'm gonna use Neat Fleece Terry for the bodies and sleeves. It has good physical properties. And Drip for the waistband and cuffs. This one, for example. Apply these fabrics to the buttons. The rib texture has a dark color, so I will desaturate it. It's in the Property Editor, Basic Parameters, Texture, Desaturation. Simulate and check how it looks. If it's not something you're looking for, pick another fabric or change the physical properties preset. Let's see what we can choose for ribbon. 
You can select any of these presets, but I recommend you to use knit or rib fabrics. You need to pick one that fits your goal the best. For example, rib 486 is stiffer and less stretchy. Look at the neckband, it becomes tight and pulls the fabric up. On the other hand, rib 319 is softer and stretchier. This preset works better for me as I want to stretch the top seam of the bands. If you feel like you need to stretch it even more, you can do it manually. Let's check the length for the top edge on the band. 2D line length is 100 cm, as we drafted. 3D is 107, so it already a bit stretched. You can turn on the elastic option and stretch it even more by changing the ratio or typing the desired segment length. Turn on the simulation so you can see changes in real time and find the best value. 114 looks good to me. I will stretch the top edge of the cuffs as well. Here we go. Usually it happens that you need to change the widths or the height of your patterns in the process. We drafted the waistband 100 cm in length, but now I see that it would be great to make it a bit shorter. You can extend or shrink the side edge on the pattern, but it's not very convenient, because you will need to simulate and fix it in a 3D window each time you change it. The other way is to select the pattern and adjust shrinkage weft and warp values in the property editor. So what the weft and warp are? Each pattern has a grain direction. You can check it with the Edit Texture tool. When you add a new pattern, it has a vertical grain line. This grain line represents the warp thread. The perpendicular thread is a weft. So if you didn't change the grain direction and you make the warp value smaller, the pattern gets shrunk vertically. If you make the weft value smaller, it shrinks horizontally. I will shrink it on the weft and extend it on the warp slightly. You can do it with any pattern. For example, I think that my hoodie is too long, so I will simply shrink it on the warp. The next step is to finish the edges of our bands. Here I will show you two methods. You may use each of them depending on the result you want to achieve. Let's hide the avatar with Shift A. I'm in the texture surface mode, which shows us a thin fabric and the right and wrong sides of the fabric. The dark grey color represents the wrong side. We can switch to the thick texture surface here or press Alt 1 and Chloe will add one more face inside of our garment. Now we see that the band has a thickness. We can increase it for this pattern using the Add Thickness Rendering option. For example, set it to 4. Here we go, it has a roundish bottom edge, so it looks like the fabric folds and goes inside. Also, you can change the thickness for the whole fabric, so it applies to all patterns from this fabric. I will set thickness rendering back to zero, then select the rib fabric and scroll down the property editor to the very end. Here you can find the thickness value, set it to 5, for example. Now the cuffs are also thicker. The top edge doesn't look correct because it has the same round edge at the bottom edge. When we add a new pattern, it has a 100% curved side geometry. That's exactly what makes the bottom edge round. We can turn off or lower it for the specific line. For the top edge, in our case. Select it on the waistband and cuffs and decrease the curvature. Also, it's better to increase the thickness of the knit cherry fabric. About 3, 3.5 looks good. By the way, I have basic patterns from the modular configurator and the curved side geometry is turned off for them. I will turn it on and set it to 100, just to have the same values on all patterns. So it was the first and the quickest way of making double-sided bands. It's simple and looks great if you need to make flat-looking bands like on these references. 
Also, they consist of only three buttons, so the file size will be smaller, which is also a plus. If you feel like it's not enough and you need to have a real fold and a part inside, like on this reference, let's make it. Basically, we need to extend our band and then fold it in half and stitch it to the top edge inside. I don't like to fold patterns in claw, it's unstable and causes collisions during the simulation. I prefer to make a duplicate pattern and imitate the fold instead. I will set the fabric thickness back to 1.5 for both fabrics. Then select waistband and calves and copy them with Ctrl C, Ctrl V. So top to top and bottom to bottom edges. Cuffs have symmetric editing, so we need to sew only one of them. Select and place them inside using the Superimpose Under option. And simulate. I need to switch to the CPU simulation, because GPU works pretty bad with layers. So here we'll need to adjust fold angles for our sims. When we sew edges together, Claw adds a 180 degree seam as we make a plain seam in real life. It works great for side, armhole and shoulder seams, but here we need to have a fold, so it should be sharp, closer to 0 degrees. Let's select the bottom sewing line with Edit Sewing Tool. It has 180 degrees fold angle. We can make it sharper by decreasing the value or blunter by increasing it. Let's set it to zero, sharp angle and check what will change. We see the opposite result, because we have a flipped face for the inner parts. Press ALT 2 to switch to the texture surface mode. The inner part is black, which means that we see the wrong side of the fabric. Select all the inner parts and right-click on them in a 3D window. Flip normal. Here we go. We see the right side. Now, when you simulate, zero degrees fold angle will make your seam sharp. I don't like to set it to zero, because we still need to have a bit of the roundness, so about 70-90 should work better. The top seam looks good, but it's only because of the elastic that we added before. If you turn it off, you will see that it looks puffy, so you can adjust the fold angle for it as well. You can decrease it once you feel it looks good, or you can change the sewing type to turned, which can be even better and stabler during the simulation. Turned seam line means that patterns are sewn parallelly to each other. There is a great image on the Claw Health Center that describes the difference between these two types. Also, we can get rid of seams in places where we need to have a fold. All the seams that you see in a 3D window are a normal map texture. It creates fake bumps that look to us as seams. We can delete or adjust this texture. I will delete it for the bottom seams. Select them with the Edit Sewing tool, go to the Property Editor, and here you will find 3D seam line settings. You can adjust the intensity, thickness or delete the texture. We had to set the intensity to zero in the previous version of Claw, uh, because the texture appears after reloading the program, but now it looks like the Claw team has fixed it in Claw 7. The last tip will be for a proper simulation. As we have two layers here, sometimes patterns can collide during the simulation. If you face this problem or want to prevent it, I recommend you to set a dependence between the outer and inner parts. There is a tool called Set Sublayer. It basically says claw what pattern should be on top of the other. For example, click on the outer part, then on the inner part. Now it will try to always have a position on top of the inner part. But as you remember, we flip the face for the inner part. That's why we need to change plus to minus. Here we go. Now when you simulate the garment and move the fabric, Claw will remember that the outer part should always be on top of the inner part and try to separate them every time when they collide. Sometimes it saves you tons of time during the simulation. That was the second way of making the double-sided bands. It takes more time and you may need to decrease the particle distance to 5 or even lower to simulate the roundness of the bottom edge. 
As for me, both methods are cool, each for its specific purpose. You can still experiment with the fold angles, shrinking and stretching. Uh, speaking of stretching, I will turn on elastic. I forgot that I turned it off to show you the fold angles. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed uh, making the cuffs with me. If you have some questions, let me know in the comments. In the next video we will add a pocket to our future hoodie, learn about internal lines and how to make patterns from the internal shapes. See you there! Bye!